Okay, so today I, I will, uh, so can you hear me, it's okay? Uh, I will show you how to, to do the topological expansion in the case of the beta model in uh, non-perturbative situations. So let me remind you the beta model. So it's Pn beta, so now it's, it's much closer than to what uh, Sasha is talking about. So it's this kind of Coulomb gas. And I think I will put some beta here. Okay, so you have n particle. And um, I would like first to discuss uh, the first result I told you, which is the convergence of the empirical measure, the Ward equilibrium measure. So yesterday, uh, I state this result, so I, I'm a bit like Sasha. I don't know to whom I should uh, uh, attribute it, but it's uh, very well known on, from many very angles. Uh, so you look at this empirical measure, and what I said is that it converges so weakly, almost surely. So this means that if you take any bonded continuous function, it will converge to the limit. And uh, the, co the, uh, the characterization of the equilibrium measure is that um, uv minimizes uh, the following functional on the space of measure, which is integral of f of x and y, d mu x, y, where f of x, y, is v of x plus uh, v of y minus the log of x minus y. Okay, and for this I needed to have some uh, assumption, which is that v is bonded continuous, well, well it's continuous, and actually not bonded, it's going to infinity faster than uh, 2 log x. Okay, so that's the hypothesis we need to do that. Okay, and uh, let me first uh, discuss the fact that uh, G has a unique uh, minimizer and characterize it. So to do that first, you show that G, the level sets of G are compact okay, in the space of measure, probability measure. Compact. Okay, so this implies that it achieves its minimal value. And so, how do you see that this is compact? Well, you first have to, well, if, if f was bonded continuous, you could see that this is closed because this would be uh, the inverse image of a closed set by a continuous function. Okay? And when is this kind of function continuous for as a function on the measure? It's when f is bonded continuous, All right? So you can see that f uh, is uh, continuous except when x is equal to y, and, but it's not bonded. However, it, because you can see that uh, it's actually f is going to infinity because uh, the log of x minus y, you can bond it from above by the log of plus the log of y plus 1. Okay, so you can see that actually because of this hypothesis, uh, f of x is bonded below by some constant um, times the log of, at least at infinity, or some alpha which is positive. Okay, so this function is uh, bonded from below, and therefore what you can see is that if you put the minimum of f on m, then you get a, a bonded continuous function. 
Okay, so to see that this set is com is a uh, is a uh, closed, you can see it by modern time convergence theorem as the intersection of the set. So you took the infimum with L. than M, and this is closed, okay, because this is bonded continuous. So at least it's a closed set, and to see that it's compact, you see that because of this, so this is included into the set where the integral of the log of x plus 1 d mu is bonded by, so it will be 1 over alpha m plus some constant, okay, because f is going to infinity uh, fast enough. And so this is actually compact, okay, because you get some uh, uh, bond on the way that uh, moments are growing, and this is, uh, yeah, this is well known that uh, this is a compact set. Any question about that? Okay, so this was just to say that now I'm, I have a nice function, this g is a nice function, it's achieved its minimum value, so you can uh, characterize the, mini the minimizer by saying that uh, a minimizer mu uh, will satisfy this inequality for all nu, so that mu plus epsilon nu is a probability measure. Okay, and when you uh, develop this uh, inequality, what you find is that the V of X minus two uh, integral of log X minus Y uh, d mu V uh, under the nu should be non-negative if you take only the first term in epsilon. Okay, so what this shows you, so you have to be careful that nu has to be so that this is a probability measure, so in particular it has mass zero, and so what you can see, and it has to be non-negative outside of the support of mu, so you can see that this implies that the minimizer will satisfy the equation that what I will call v effective of x, called v of x minus two integral of log x minus y, so there will exist a, a, a constant so that this will be zero on the support of mu, and this will be non-negative out everywhere. Okay, so I know that any minimizer has to satisfy these inequalities. And now I want to show you that there exists a unique uh, minimizer. So what I do for that, I just look at g of mu minus g of, so let me call mu v one of these guys, which satisfies this equation. At this point, there could be many. But uh, if you look at the difference, so what you will find is that this will be given by the integral of the effective potential, I have two, mu, minus mu v, this, is, this depends on mu v, okay. uh, plus, so minus the integral of log of x minus y, d mu minus mu v, uh, d mu minus mu v y. Okay, and the point is that this, so I told you that if I, I can, here this is a, a centered measure, so I can subtract here the, yeah, I, I could subtract my, my constant, so this is going to be always non-negative, and this uh, disappears because of this, equ uh, this equality. And so this quantity is non-negative. And now I look at this uh, quantity and the point, which is uh, very crucial in all the analysis of beta ensemble, is that this defines a distance on the space of measure. So why? Because if you look at 
the log, as for instance, as a green function of as a eternal, so you can write that something like this. Okay, something like this. And so if you believe me that you can interchange uh, integrations, then uh, this quantity uh, that I will call later for obvious reason d square. So d square of mu minus mu v. So this is going to be the integral. So this term will disappear again because you have a centered uh, measure. And so what you get is 1 over 2t integral of this guy. And then you can uh, use uh, Uber Stratonovich to replace this Gaussian by uh, its Fourier transform. So you will get will be uh, square root of 2 pi t minus, so here you will have minus i x minus y g so times exponential minus g square uh, yeah, so let me put it here So here I will, uh, I will get so the, the Fourier transform with the Gaussian. I can distribute it here. I do it in one. G. And uh, so at the end of the day, when you perform the integration over T, and what you find, and this is what you should uh, remember, is so what you should remember is that this term d square mu mu v. So this is the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over t times the Fourier transform of the difference of your measures. So, so here I have integration of uh, g. So I, I, I wrote this as some Gaussian, uh, as the Fourier of Gaussian. So I have m minus t g square over 2. And here I had expo expect uh, exponential of i x minus y times g. I distributed these two integrals. And uh, then I took the integral, if you take the integral over t, well, you, you make a change of variable, and you realize that at the end, you have only this integral 1 over t. Ah, this one for the time being. Uh, ah, so here, here, as I said, because this is centered, here, what, what, this will be 0. That, but that's important because when, sometimes we try to deal with non-centered entries on this term, then uh, rinse the argument. Okay, so, so then it's clear that you have a unique uh, minimizer because this is going to be non-negative and this is this distance square. So, so what we proved is that uh, g of mu minus g of mu v is greater than this distance square. And why do I call it a distance? Well, you see that if this is zero, these terms have to be zero, and so your measure here has to be uh, zero. And actually, you have even, uh, so if you want to compare this with the weak topology, so if, for instance, if you have a, some function, so something that we often do, we go in Fourier. So if f is in L1, and so what you get is f, T exponential i t x d mu minus mu v t. 
and then what you do is that you use Cauchy-Schwarz to compare this to this distance. So you will get, divide by square root of t, multiply by square root of t, and what you see is that so this is smaller than uh, t times the modulus f t squared dt, so by Cauchy, Cauchy-Schwarz times uh, your distance. Okay, and this, this is comparable to some uh, C1 uh, norm. Okay, so why did I spend uh, some time on this? So this shows the uniqueness, and now I want to show you concentration of measure. I hope I convinced you uh, last time that we needed really to have concentration of measure. And uh, the point is that somehow the density of our measure is really closely related with uh, this distance. And so there is a lemma, which is due to uh, Minda and Morel Zegala. which tells you the following, that if you look at the distance of, so I will define, so this is a new notation. The probability that this distance is greater th than delta is going to be smaller than minus uh, C delta square n square plus some constants n log n. So for all delta, Okay, so this will be some very nice concentration because this will show that somehow, uh, typically, I can take, so that this term kills this term, I can take delta to be of order uh, square root of uh, log n divided by square root of n. Okay, so this is actually, uh, as we will discuss later, this is not an optimal uh, uh, speed, but it's still something which is, Nice, because remember here that we don't have the convexity of the potential, so we cannot choose at all all the coercive inequality we, we, we said before. So here, what is this mu bar? So the point is that uh, D uh, is, uh, is, uh, is this term, and you see that if you apply it to a measure with Dirac masses, this will be infinite, okay? Because the log of, at your Dirac point, you will have the this, the, the difference of the two points, and you get infinite. So this has no meaning if, uh, if you have a, so this cannot be true. I mean, this would be a, a kind of uh, impossible. But so what we need to do to have this, uh, this lemma is to regularize the empirical measure. And so the way that you do that is uh, first you define lambda tilde i, which are going to be so lambda i, so lambda, uh, lambda tilde i, so this would be lambda tilde i minus 1 plus the maximum of lambda i minus lambda i minus 1 and uh, some n minus alpha. So I change a bit the gain value so to force that there is some spacing between them. Okay. And uh, I take lambda, let's say lambda 1 is lambda tilde 1. Okay, so this implies uh, that I have some spacing, and then mu bar n will be the expectation of uh, some additional measure of these Dirac measures, these eigenvalues, plus some u, where u is uniform on some interval uh, 0 and minus gamma. So the advantage of this is that now it has a density. And so eventually, I will be able to, uh, to add the diagonal terms, which are posing problem. And if I take alpha and gamma uh, very large, uh, I will not be far from the original uh, eigenvalues. Okay, so, so the remark is uh, that lambda i minus lambda tilde i, so this will be smaller than n times n minus alpha for all i. Okay, at, at each time, at worst, I'm doing this error. 
the the spacing are bigger. And uh, so if I look at the, the distance uh, from uh, the original empirical measure to this new one, so this will be smaller than uh, the Lipschitz norm of F, okay, the uniform bond on the derivative, times uh, the two errors I am making. So here it's N1 minus alpha. And here I am making the error on U. So it's N minus gamma. Okay, so if alpha and gamma are big enough, I'm making a very small error. So the point now is to prove the, the estimate, so the proof of the lemma. So it's to see that now, so the idea is just to show that your, uh, uh, your, uh, your density, so this should be lambda 1, lambda n, so it's going to be bonded above by exponential minus uh, beta n squared times uh, your distance uh, plus some error which will be of order n log n. So this is uh, what I'm going to show you. I think you will agree that, uh, sorry, I forgot the square. I think you will agree that if I have this kind of estimate, uh, I can deduce this kind of estimate because where this distance is greater than delta, the density will be smaller than exponential minus beta n squared delta squared. And so you just have to integrate that. Okay, so how do you prove this, uh, this type of, uh, of estimate? It's quite uh, easy. First, uh, you bond from below uh, the, um, the partition function. What you show is that this is bonded uh, below by minus beta uh, n square uh, g of mu v up to some error, which is of order n log n. I'm not going to do the detail of that, but the idea is that somehow you just restrict your integral to take the lambda i very close to the quantiles of this measure. So the details are in the notes, okay? So it's just, it's really you, you find out the, the right uh, event which, which makes the, the biggest contribution. And then uh, you need to, to bond the, the density. So you add this. Okay, and so, as I said, you, we can add uh, we, can, we can replace this by the lambda tilde. So here also, plus some error, which is proportional to n uh, minus, so this was the error term here uh, of our here. Yeah. Let's, say, let's say we take um, 1 minus alpha equal gamma, uh, minus gamma. Okay, so we have an error here which is going to be of order gamma. Okay, and uh, then we want to introduce uh, the u. So we put everything in the exponential, and, uh, and now we introduce the u. So the, the, the goal of adding the u is to be able afterwards to add the diagonal terms. Okay, so it's the log. So the expectation of a u and a u tilde, which are independent, so, it's, so this will be u minus lambda tilde j plus uh, minus u tilde. 
Okay, and then I have the same thing. So I'm just trying to write everything in terms of this u bar. And then I have an error, so the error will be just the, the ratio of these two things. But so uh, what will be the error? I will compute uh, first, so the expectation of a u, u tilde of the log of lambda tilde i minus uh, plus u. Okay, so I have this term, but this term, because I, I uh, put away uh, the, the lambda tilde i, so here I, I will get one. So what I will get is one plus this u uh, minus u tilde. Okay, so this now I, uh, is bounded by n, so it was minus gamma, and this was, so maybe I should not have fixed this guy, but anyway. And this one was greater than n minus alpha. So it's n minus gamma plus alpha. Okay, so I will choose gamma greater than alpha so that this is small. And this will make a small, uh, I can even choose so that this is of order n minus one. And the same here, okay? I have also a small error when I do that. And the point now is that I can add the diagonal term because when i is equal to g, the diagonal term now makes sense. It's the expectation of the log of u minus u tilde, which is of order log n. But again, um, this will be only, uh, I will have only n such terms. Okay? So at the end of the day, uh, what you get is exactly that if you choose your alpha and your gamma in the right way, then uh, what you get is uh, that the density bounded by exponential n square g of mu bar minus g of mu plus some error which is of order cn log n. And then you use, so I just erased it, the fact that this is uh, greater than O. What? Uh, at this point, I don't think I, uh, well, ah, okay, now it needs to be C1. C1, and okay, you have to be careful with uh, what happens at infinity, but let me leave you to the notes to be careful with uh, the larger eigenvalues and so on. I mean, it's, uh, uh, it's only a detail, but imagine that the derivative is bounded and then it's good. Okay, so, so I should have this at the end of the day and, and then I bond this below by the distance square. Okay, so this uh, allows me to prove uh, this lemma, which give, you, give me my concentration, which is a, a key step in the derivation. Okay, so then how do I proceed? I want to get, yes. What do you mean? Yeah. Okay, you're, you're just, yeah, I mean, you have to be careful with what happens at infinity. But somehow you have to see that this V is going to make everything going right because it's, uh, it's going to infinity faster than two log X. And again, the, the I mean, the point is that it's, it can of become quite technical when you take care of all this, but it's, it's not complicated. I mean, it's just a bit longer. Yeah. Yeah. What happened where? Yeah, okay, so here, so the idea that, uh, so you had, you had this term, and now I will add also the term uh, on the diagonal, again up, up to uh, 
an error which is of order cn log n. And then you should see that this is exponential minus beta n squared g of mu n. Okay? I mean, everything was done so that you can add the diagonal term on really of the energy. Uh, and then use this formula I showed you before. Yeah. So, so adding the u is adding some density so that the diagonal term makes sense. Okay, so now uh, the next step is to try to get expansion on, um, is it okay? Yeah. So the next step is to, to get expansion. And so the idea would be to use uh, Schrodinger dyson equations. So I, ne I never know. I, 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 I mean, if this should be dyson Schwinger or Schwinger dyson but so let's. OK, so the lemma for the dyson Schwinger equations uh, will be that, so the expectation, let me write it. Well, directly. Okay. Okay, so in my notes, I wanted to announce first the result. Okay, so what we want to prove, and we will use Dyson Schwinger equation, don't be too. Um, so, what we will first prove is that, so if we look at this uh, guy, minus mu v, so times n. So this will converge towards, so 1 over 2 minus 1 over uh, beta integral of some operator, which is the master operator that we started to see last time, against d mu v. Okay, so you see that this goes to zero when beta equal to two. So this was what we had before. And now I should uh, introduce the master operator. So the master operator is psi, which is uh, v prime of x, f of x, minus the integral of f of x, minus f of y, divided by x minus y, d mu v. All right. And um, I should make uh, some uh, assumption for that. So what I will assume is so that this effective potential, uh, so it's differentiable. So now V is smooth enough in the following, and F also is smooth enough. So I will assume that this is always strictly positive outside the support of mu. U V, and I will make this assumption that um, U V is of critical, so it can be written as something like this. Well, S is strictly positive. So what you really need is strictly positive in the neighborhood of the support A B, but let me assume it's strictly positive everywhere. And again, v, v and f will be smooth enough. So the, the, the main point of this assumption is that we can indeed uh, show that this uh, operator is invertible, and which is a crucial step to, uh, to solve the dyson schwinger equations. And why can we do that? So it's the so called trichomy formula. It is invertible. So if you remember uh, the equation that characterized mu v, so it was saying that v of x minus uh, the integral of uh, log x minus y, d mu v was constant on the support. So if you differentiate on so if you differentiate that, what you see that v prime of x should be, so the integral of 1 minus x minus y d mu v. So of course, you have to be careful that this is not really a 
well defined always, so you have to take the principal value. Okay, so then you can see that this operator will simplify on the support because if you put this term out, you have to put the principal value. And what you see that xi f of x is just going to be the principal value of the integral of f of y x minus y. And here I use uh, the hypothesis, so it's s of y square root of y minus minus a uh, dy. Oh, that be. Okay, and the point which is crucial in all this story is that this is known to be invertible because you have the square root, so it's uh, all result from a trichomy book. And uh, so this is for uh, x in support of mu v, so it's a, b. Okay, the support of... Uh, and uh, so you have an explicit formula uh, which, is, which is given in the notes, and what is important is, uh, actually it's, uh, you, you can even follow the smoothness property. So if f is uh, g times continuously differentiable, uh, then uh, xi minus one of f will be uh, g minus two times continuously differentiable. Okay, so you keep some smoothness, so we, in the computation you can follow uh, the smoothness, so I will not do that, but uh, that's a, a, a crucial point. So why, um, so what, let, let me show you how this uh, operator appears when you want to do the expansion. So as I said, you, use, you want to use uh, dyson schwinger equations. And so what are these equations? And so, so the equation is that if you take any uh, test function, Okay, so the expectation of that is going to be 1 over n, 1 over 2 minus 1 over beta times the expectation of the integral of f prime of x. Okay, so it looks quite a lot like what we had before. If you would take f uh, to be just a monomial and you expand this ratio, that also appeared actually in, in the course of uh, Sasha. Then you will find this sum over xl, xk minus l minus 2 that I had all the time. And so this is the other term, and before we didn't have this term because beta was equal to 2. Okay, and so what, uh, so now we want to uh, use this equation. So the idea is to expand uh, the empirical measure around uh, mu v. And when you do that, so what you will find is, so maybe I should go over there. All right. So that the amplitude, ah, I didn't say how to derive this. And Tamara asked me yesterday how to derive this. So again, it's an integration by part, and you can see that this will be a consequence of writing that if you take any function f, which is c1, uh, then uh, the integral of the derivative of f times the density is going to be zero, okay, just because at infinity it vanishes. So here I integrate over everything, and then I sum over i. 
Okay, so how do you see that this gives you this formula? Well, when you differentiate your, uh, your density, what you will get is the sum of one over lambda i minus lambda j. Okay, and so you will combine this with the f lambda i to get this term. And uh, the v, the differential of the v will multiply f and will give you this term. So the only term, the only point where you have to be careful is this term. So one derivative of f will come from this derivative. But another one will come because here again you had to fulfill uh, the, the sum which was over i different from j and by adding one term. So this is how you get this term. Yes. So uh, Tamara, is it okay? So it's, it's just, again, integration by parts. I mean, it's just, uh, you, you just have to think about the right function you should integrate by part. Okay, so, so what you do is that you write uh, that this is a difference plus mu v, and then you plug it into the dyson Schwinger equation. So what you see that what you will get is that the psi of f under the difference Uh, this is going to be equal to uh, 1 over n, so this term, 1 over 2 minus 1 over beta prime d mu n. And then you always have the quadratic term, which is just the integral of f of x minus f of y, x minus y, d mu n minus mu v mu n minus mu v. Okay, so that's, uh, I leave you the detail, but I mean it's just when you, when you expand, you will have twice this integral coming from these two terms, and, and then the, the term in mu v will disappear because mu v satisfies some equation itself. All right, so you seem to be in a good shape because this should be small. But actually, uh, it's not so small. What we had is that this distance was of the order of log n divided by square root of n. Okay. I mean, to apply this kind of thing, what you do is that you, you write f in Fourier transform. Then you will write this integral in terms of products of integral under this measure. And then you can use your... Um, your, uh, your thing, your, your estimate. So you can see that for f uh, sufficiently smooth, this will be of order log n over n. So it's not yet good enough to prove uh, what I, I told you here because I have log n. So I need to improve my uh, concentration of measure estimates. And that's actually a, a point which is kind of subtle that I don't know how to do that directly, but I'm going to show you now how to improve these estimates to be able to say that this term is really neglectable. So I could do that by either actually using the dyson schwinger equations uh, by doing this kind of computation I, um, I did before, but I'm going to show you an, an, another way is a bit more elegant to get directly the central limit theorem, which is in the same spirit as the eisen Schwinger equation, but a bit different. And uh, so what will be the lemma? Uh, the lemma will be that if I look at some, uh, some, uh, some variable, which is the sum of f lambda i minus f lambda j divided by lambda i minus lambda j uh, minus uh, the sum of v prime lambda i f lambda i, I have one over n. Uh, then what I can show you is that the expectation of lambda xn of f. So this converges towards some 
m of f plus uh, lambda square sigma of f. Okay, so I can show you the directly the uh, the the central limit theorem, but not really for what I was expecting because I still have this sum. Um, and MF, so it's exactly what I would believe. I mean, you would expect that this is approximately this. Well, so you would expect that this is approximately this thing, but uh, it's not really this yet because of, of this, uh, this is not, uh, I still have the empirical measure here. So MF is just this, uh, this term. Lambda I, F of lambda I minus F of lambda J. Yeah. Okay, and um, how do I, so, so this is quite close of what I want to do, which is to prove the, the central limit theorem, except that here I have still the empirical measure. But if I can do that, then I will be able to conclude because I can see that this term, so this uh, xi n of f, so this is actually, so the integral of xi of f, up to some error, and this error is exactly, so it's n, f of x minus f of y, x minus y. Again, it's always that I need to okay, so I mean it's just a computation. And so what I what I what we saw is that this is of order log n uh, divided by n, maybe log, log n square, you know, log n. And so I see then that because this term is of order one, okay, because of this, I can, and this is of order log n, so I can, I can deduce that this is of most of order log n. Okay, just because I know this is of order one, if I, if I could prove that, I know that this is a converging, this converges to Gaussian. Actually, I can even have an uh, estimate on that. And so from this is of order one, and this is of order log n over n, I multiply by n. This is of order log n. So I have improved uh, my estimates before I knew that this was of order uh, one over square root of n. Uh, it was of order square root of n, I have improved it to log n. And now once I have this estimate, I can come back here, and here I have improved this estimate. And this will be simply a further uh, log n over n square. Uh, yeah. Something like this. Okay. Everybody uh, agrees that this way I improved my, uh, my concentration estimates. And so the, the, way, uh, the way you prove that directly is another trick of the same kind of doing integration by part is to do a change of variable. And so to do that, what you do is that you are going to do the change of variable lambda i plus one over n f of lambda i. Okay, and, um, and so when you do that in the partition function, so what you get is a product of lambda i plus one over n f of lambda i minus lambda j minus one of n f of lambda j, the beta. Then you have the same thing, n beta sum of v lambda i plus one over n f of lambda i. And then you have the product of one plus uh, one over n f prime of lambda i coming from the Jacobian. Okay, and now again you expand, like uh, 
like what actually Sasha did. Oh, maybe I should have kept that. But so when you expand in the exponential, so f is bounded, so what you are going to find is that, and you divide by z and v, so what you will have is that one is approximately, so you will get first the density of uh, p and v, and then the first term in the exponential will be uh, x and f, and then when you look at the error, so coming from here, on coming from uh, 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 coming from uh, yeah coming from every, for, from the the, exp the the expansion, so what you will get is something like this. Okay, well here I did some tricks. So M F was coming from here, so I had one over n the sum. Ah, okay, so I should have, ah, I should have put some gamma and not denoted it lambda. So MF is just this uh, sum, where I have one term coming from here, and I, uh, I have one uh, extra, uh, one term less coming from uh, coming from here, and uh, so this was approximately, because I know I have concentration of measure, so f prime uh, x d mu v times one minus beta over two, and sigma, so sigma of f, so this was coming from the second order, so here I have v second, so this was coming from one over n uh, sum of v second lambda i, f of lambda i square. And I have also the second order term coming from here. So this was my, uh, plus, minus, and I had the beta also, I think, yeah, I had the beta. And here I have the sum of uh, f of lambda i minus f of lambda j, lambda i minus lambda j uh, square. And here again, I can apply that this is approximately constant. Okay, so this is the covariance. Okay, and I can replace here everywhere the empirical measure by the limit because these are just terms of order one and I have concentration of measure. Okay, so maybe I should uh, stop there and I will finish uh, next time. But to conclude, what did we do? We, uh, we, first, we first did concentration of measure. As I said it's a, a central point in all this approach. And then we try to use dyson tringer equation, but we realize our concentration of measure estimates were not good enough. So we had to improve it. So here we have this very nice trick, uh, which is to, to do this change of this uh, change of variable. So it's kind of doing all these dyson tringer equation in one time. Um, and there you use you need still to have the kind of, of convergence of the empirical measure to, to be able to conclude. But this allows you to show the convergence of this guy to a Gaussian process. And uh, this uh, convergence, once you have it, you can improve it to see that this term is going to be ne neglectable, okay? So you really prove, actually, a central limit theorem for this, okay? Because now you know that this term is a further, so this is a really a further one over n up to some log n factor. So you can neglect this. So this gives you a CLT for this. And, uh, and so in turn, because you can invert size, this gives you the CLT. 
Okay, so each time you have to be careful because you are losing some, you have to, some regularity of F to assume to be able to neglect everything and use uh, your concentration of measure results, but that's, that's the spirit. So I will uh, stop and next time I will just finish. So uh, to show you how this allows to, to prove the next order correction. And, uh, and then I will explain you how to uh, generalize this strategy to the several cut uh, model and ev eventually to the discrete models, uh, but in a much less uh, detailed way, of course, because uh, I have only one class. Thank you.